Good morning, T-Rex. What time is it? Time to do some math. Let's see. Three hours until high tide. It's about six hours until the full moon. 30 degrees. That's close to 40 degrees warmer than yesterday. February 5th. The anniversary of the blizzard of 1978. 45 years ago. And I think it was a Sunday in 1978, the 5th, right? The storm came in that night. And then the next morning we had five inches of snow in an hour in Dennis as they let us out of school. It changed to rain on Cape Cod. And the wind is about 25 miles an hour less strong than yesterday. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that yesterday. <laughs> Can't apologize to a day. I'm apologizing for how the wind really muffled my commentary and really it was disturbing how cold it was yesterday. I'm, it took me until last night when the wind died down for our house to warm up and for my fingers and toes to warm up. Anyhow, it's a dramatic warming trend. Let's do some more math. The final numbers on yesterday, as far as the surface map went, uh, that low bombed out to 944 in the Labrador Sea, and it was a 1036 high. Is that what that is over the mid Atlantic? So it only was a 95 millibar pressure gradient pushing the wind to 118 miles per hour on Mount Washington. That tropopause fold we had in December on the 23rd and 24th, the wind went to 150 on Mount Washington. So we didn't match the extreme, but that 47 below, I think that's the number that's going in the book. Uh, it's about, let's see, <laughs> 50, 60 degrees warmer this morning on Mount Washington. So that was it, winter's over. We'll see how much damage it did to the plants a uh, couple of months, I guess, or maybe even have to wait till the middle of uh, summertime to see how the hydrangea respond. How you doing? How you doing? Let's sacrifice one for the team here. Yeah, so that was swollen with water. I'm going to squish it up a little bit. It's still wet. It's not frozen anymore. You'll be okay next year. <laughs> and as for ice... It all happens so fast, and the temperature's going up so fast, so I'm gonna try and make this a quick edit. Well, it doesn't seem like that, Tim, does it? And get to uh, the local duck pond and play some pond hockey. I wouldn't mind being skiing this morning. Uh, the ski lifts are open. It's very windy, though. High pressure going off to our south, wind increasing rapidly from the southwest. Uh, but there's some un untouched snow up there, upper mountains. I'm sure some of it's just uh, blue ice with that wind, but there's going to be other pockets in the glades that are going to be several feet of windblown secret stash if you can get under the trees. Uh, Got to get some more stuff done around here after pond hockey. How many loads of laundry after chasing powder all week? So what's going to happen next? Uh, a warm front goes across northern New England, fairly windy from the southwest today. Temperature in Boston gets up to 45 to 50. Are you kidding me? And then there's going to be a wave of low pressure going across northern Maine with a cold front coming down here. A little cold front comes in tonight and tomorrow, believe it or not. I don't think there's too much action with that. Some snow showers near the Canadian border. Oh, there's wind. T-Rex, wind. Let's get out of the wind. I will invest in better equipment at some point. Uh, when you all start paying me for these videos. Ha! <laughs> right. A uh, little bit colder air. Uh, the the 14-day here for Boston it shows dramatically colder on Tuesday, actually. And it's pretty interesting what's going to happen after that. Uh, you have uh, a cold high pressure to the north and uh, warm high pressure to the south here coming in Tuesday and Wednesday. And then a storm coming out of the Gulf of Mexico Thursday. And it looks like that high pressure to the south is going to end up winning. And the low pressure is going to go over the St. Lawrence River Valley, or even west of that. So the rain snow line goes up to the Canadian border with a fairly juicy system here coming in Thursday into Friday. And then that's gonna linger. The front's gonna stall over us next weekend. And boy, the jury is really out. Yesterday we showed a benchmark nor'easter coming in uh, for Super Bowl Sunday. Come on, the wind just picked up, it's chasing me. Uh, sorry. So what's gonna happen now? Well, the Euro, that's some guidance that have been using. Oh, by the way, congratulations, Euro, on that minus 10 in Boston yesterday. You were the only model, well, not the only model, but uh, WBZ also went for minus nine. Some of us, me and uh, 
uh, one of my <laughs> protégés, Chris Lambert, were around minus four uh, with the GEM and the GFS. So just an amazing, well, <laughs> one win for the Euro Moss and another experience uh, of extreme. We, we survived an extreme here like nothing in our life. Anyhow, back to the Euro. Uh, next weekend, where it was a benchmark storm yesterday, now kind of lingering low pressure off to our, our south with uh, uh, low pressure also north in Ontario. But the other guidance, the Canadian and the GFS have a more of a high pressure system in Ontario and a stronger low coming at us next weekend. So all things are, are all bets are off, I guess, on uh, what I'm talking about for next uh, Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. No football today. What are we going to do after hockey? <laughs> Clean the house, get caught up. Something's gonna happen next weekend, probably little things before that, a major warm up. So when you add up uh, yesterday and the next six or seven days, we are in a warm weather pattern with just one day of extreme. Oh, and another thing, there is one more Bombo Genesis detail. Low pressure yesterday in Miami, more than two inches of rain, the most we've had. Uh, combined in the last three months. Anyhow, that low is going to bomb out north of Bermuda. Uh, so maybe some surf coming up here again. Oh, yeah, yesterday, <laughs> Peter got some video of somebody surfing in Whitecrest and just happens to be <laughs> a famous local, Eric Anderson, surfing yesterday morning in Wellfleet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For me, uh, it was powder chasing all week in northern Vermont, then ice day. Yesterday was the TK ice day. I'm gonna stop talking for now and just show you me chasing ice yesterday. Frozen fingers in the morning. Couldn't even bring Rex with me, but later in the day, a little less cold. Talk to you tomorrow. Here I go being crazy again in the cold and the wind, trying to get some nice video. It's not easy. So this bit of ice right in here formed way over there in Quincy and it's been coming along with the wind and the tide, catching the point right here. I've been watching it from the house. I had to come down, even though I'm totally freezing. See it going by on its way to hang up next stop. I can't even feel my fingers. I don't know how those Nat Geo people do it. Everybody that makes the videos in the cold. I am frostbit just after five minutes. Man. Let's see if there's some ice here too, T-Rex. It's now uh, close to five and it's still daylight. And we've had two nights in a row with temperatures below freezing. We had one night last night with a temperature of 10 below, zero. <laughs> and now that duck pond that we went to right over there a couple of weeks ago that had a skim of ice, looks like somebody was on it today. Let's check it out. Check it out, yeah, right here, this way. Look, I think we can go right on there. <laughs> wow. One night of 10 below zero. Look what it'll do for you. Two inches of ice on the duck pond. And T-Rex is on it. We're skating, kind of T-Rex, kind of skating. I don't think we're gonna go to Whitman Pond yet. <laughs> but uh, 
the first ice of the season. So I am going skating tomorrow morning. Should have brought them tonight. I really didn't think it would be ready, but that's how fast you can get ice. Man, I've really ruined my fingers over the years, I think, making these videos. It's about 12 or 13 degrees outside, and I just took my gloves off for a second. And uh, fingers are frozen again. Makes a big difference, though, if the temperature's in the 20s tomorrow. No frostbite tomorrow. We're going to be doing a little ice skating. And it's nice to have the sun. Well, not the sun, but some uh, daylight here at 5 o'clock. Now I am pretty much shocked that there are two inches of ice on Whitman's Pond. Probably open water about three days ago. Just amazing how fast ice forms when you have the coldest night in your entire life in eastern Massachusetts. Black ice. Yeah, that just looks like some older ice. Probably safer, but it's always... All right, it's getting a little thin. <laughs> I can feel it settling. Anyhow, pond hockey, Whitman's in the morning, anybody? Almost like skating. <laughs> And yeah, my fingers are freezing. This is just barely <laughs> thick enough. Only takes a couple of inches. Don't tell your parents I said that though. We're all doing it. Everyone's showing up here. Can we actually go skating this weekend? Tomorrow morning I think will be good. All right, we don't have to get out of the car this time. <laughs> Stay in the car where it's warm, but conclude this day of ice with more ice and a pink sunset at quarter past five. So we're down here at Bert's Boatyard on the innards of the Four River. And those are the West Gusset Yacht Club docks. Let's see, they're going to go in and... March, April, May. Three months. Halfway there. Up to 14. 5.30. They have so much pent up energy. You wanna come out? You're a Maine Coon. You were built for this weather, come on. Yes, come on. <laughs> 